Hello YouTubers and preppers, I'm Evita Cooks and Preps and I'm coming to you with another must-have pantry essential. In today's video I'm taking these 10 pounds of lean ground beef, I'm cooking it up to put it up in the pantry and I'm gonna share with you my recipe for the ultimate canned ground beef. I'm gradually adding the ground beef into the pot and I added a little bit of water because when you add a little bit of water it softens up the meat and the amount of water that I'm using is going to evaporate in cooking. And today I am going to share with you how you can take simple ground beef and turn it into the ultimate canned beef. A lot of the uh, canning recipes that you find call for browning the meat and maybe adding a little bit of salt and that's about it. But today I'm going to show you how you can take that same process and season your meat ahead of time before canning. That way you have perfectly cooked ground meat canned ready to go whenever you need it. And that ground meat, once it's canned, you can keep it in your pantry, obviously without refrigeration, which is a very big bonus. Or maybe bag it and keep it in the freezer. But today we're just mainly focusing in canning it. However, you can make some tacos with it, you can make some empanada, make a nice lasagna. In fact, if you want, you can make some meat sauce. The truth is, is the possibilities with this meat, once you put it through the canning process, are endless. I've already added all the meat, and as you can see, it's quite a bit of meat. We're just looking for no pink on the meat. And I'm also going to uh, cook it until some of the liquid and the water evaporates. And most people cook the meat up to this point and then they fill the jars and can it. However, today I'm showing you how you can do the ultimate canned ground meat. While the meat is cooking, I have my beef broth warming up. Remember, we're doing hot canning and anytime you do hot canning everything needs to be warm that means the meat has to be warm the broth or the water you're using needs to be warm the jars need to be clean sterilized and warm while we wait for the meat to cook we also need to get our canner ready and I have my canner already preheating with about two to three inches of water which is the recommendation for my canner depending on the canner that you use you may need more or less water but for the most part most canners call for about two to three inches of water. The meat is almost ready as you can see and I'm just gonna wait for some of that liquid to evaporate. If you don't have beef broth you can use water, you can use vegetable broth, whatever you have available is fine. I prefer to use beef broth since I'm making ground meat. And even though I'm using a lean meat, you still get a little bit of fat and that's fine because fat equals flavor. So it's okay if we get a little bit of fat in there. Some people like to drain and rinse their meat before canning it. I don't do that. I've never had a problem with my ground meat processing it that way. Okay, the meat is ready and we can start seasoning the meat. And I have here some onions that I preserved in the freezer. I like to keep them this way, especially when I have a lot of onions. And this is a perfect way to use them, especially if your onions have been in the freezer for a long time and you need your space for something else. This is a perfect project to use them. I'm also gonna add some freshly minced garlic. Today I'll be using my own natural condiments and seasoning, the adobo criollo, the all pro seasoning, and the sazon criollo, and I'm adding the adobo criollo, all pro seasoning. The all pro seasoning has a little bit of cumin, oregano, garlic. I'm also gonna add the sazon, and the sazon that I make is using a variety of spices and herbs. I'm also adding my sofrito criollo. Some broth paste and seasoning. If you don't have the beef broth powder, you could use the cubes. For some added flavor, I'm adding some Worcestershire powder. The 
remaining ingredients are optional and I have some bell peppers in the freezer that I'm going to use. You can use fresh or frozen peppers. You can even use the dehydrated peppers that come like this. And I'll leave the link in the description box for you. As you can see, the meat is perfectly cooked. And to finish it, I'm going to be adding the two cousins, cilantro and culantro. Okay, everything is ready. The meat is hot. The broth that I'll be using is also hot. I've cleaned and sanitized the jars. This time I sanitized them in the oven. I've also sanitized all the utensils we'll be using for the process, including the lids and the rings. And we're ready to begin filling our jars. And we're gonna work very quickly because we wanna make sure our meat is warm throughout the whole process. And we're packing the jar up to about an inch headspace from the top. That's very important, especially when we're pressure canning. This one has a little too much, so I'm gonna remove a little bit from the top. As you practice, you'll be able to eyeball it, but if you still feel that you need to make sure, you can always use this little wand that is dual purpose and you can use it to measure it and if you bring it all the way to the top that's about an inch head space notice that since I cooked the meat with a little bit of water and I didn't remove the natural fat from the meat we have quite a bit of broth and we may not have to add too much broth I'm still gonna add enough just to bring it up to about one inch head space And now I'm just going to top it with a little bit of the beef broth. You can use water, whatever you have available. The measuring stick has a dual purpose. You can use it to measure the headspace from the top of the jars, but you can also use it as an air bubbler. And we're just basically going to introduce it in the four corners like so to remove any air bubbles. I also like to put it in the center and rock it side by side. This way we can remove all the air. And this is a very important step. You want to make sure you do not skip it. And now with a dish towel, you could use a cotton towel or a kitchen towel, even paper towel. I'm going to clean off the rims of the jars using a little bit of vinegar. I'm using my homemade rice vinegar. You could use any vinegar you have available. And you're just basically going to remove any meat particles from the top of the rim. If you don't clean the rims and there's pieces of meat or even a little bit of the juice from the meat, that's going to prevent your jars from sealing properly. And after you've gone through all this trouble, you want to make sure that when you put it through the canning process that they seal perfectly. I'm going to do the same with the lid. And the lid should be new. It's not recommended that you reuse these lids because these lids have a seal. In the inside. And once you put them through the canning process the first time, uh, they may not necessarily seal properly the next time around. And this little stick or wand right here, it's used, as you can see, to pick up the lids. That way we don't have to touch the lids and contaminate the lids. And basically we just to place your lid over the top of the jar, slide it off like so. And while we finish the jars, I have my pressure canner heating up with about two to three inches of water. And we add our bands. The bands are solely there only for the purpose of securing the lids. 
and we want them finger tight and basically what finger tight means is you're going to twist it until you can't twist it anymore and then very quickly with your fingers you tighten let's it let's do another one okay and we're going to twist it until we can't twist it with our fingers anymore and very gently tighten Okay, we're all done and the meat yielded 15 pints of ground meat, which I think is a pretty good amount of ground beef. The manufacturer for my canner does not recommend that you use it on a stove top with a glass top like mine. And I'm going to finish the canning process with my outdoor propane burner. Okay, and we have to wait until it begins to vent, and once it begins to vent, we can add the uh, weighted gauge, uh, and you have to check the elevation in your area to decide how many you need. For me, it's going to be 10. Okay, and now we just wait until the gauge reaches 240. I'm going to monitor it closely, and the heat right now is between 3 and 4. Some evaporation going on and that's exactly what we're looking for at this point I'm going to set the timer for 75 minutes which is the recommended time to can meat at the end of the 75 minutes when the pressure drops to zero it is safe to open the canner Okay, after they come out of the pressure cooker, you have to allow them to rest and cool for about 12 to 14 hours. I always rest mine covered with a towel, you could use a blanket, whatever you have available, so that they can come to room temperature slowly. If uh, your house is too cold and suddenly we move these out of the uh, pressure cooker, the temperature change can cause them to crack. So that's why I like to cover mine. But that's just an additional step that I take. All we have left to do is to wipe the jars. And I always like to use a little bit of warm water with vinegar. You can use a little bit of soapy water. Whatever you have available is fine. Sometimes in the process they get a little gunky. Like this one right here. Check it out. So it's always a good idea to uh, wipe them clean. Also, I'm going to be removing the bands. The function of the bands is only to secure the content in the process. And it's always a good idea and recommended to remove the bands because that is how you'll be able to tell if you have a seal fail. You'll be able to see it a lot easier. If you end up with a bad seal or losing the seal, it'll start oozing, it'll get oxygen, obviously bacteria is going to start forming. And if you have the bands on, you might not be able to see it immediately. Okay. The good thing about canning meats is that you have them ready for whenever you need them. It only requires reheating and very minimum work. And obviously you can use the meat to make tacos, you can make some empanadas, uh, you can even make a lasagna with it. The possibilities are truly endless. And they also keep for several months. Some people say they're good for about a year. I say maybe even longer, but don't take my word for it. Do your own research. Make sure you educate yourself and read about it and make your own conclusions. And depending on your findings, use your best judgment. When you remove the rings, you want to wipe the rim. 
just to make sure there's no grease or anything on that rim, especially since we're going to be putting it in a long-term storage. And also, don't forget to date and label the content of your jars. That's very important. And this jar right here is ready for long-term storage. Like I said, you can store this for months, even years, as long as you follow the instructions and seal them properly. At this point, you could also verify that they're sealed. And let me see if I can pull on it. Look at that. I am pulling with all my strength and I can't lift the top. And then another way you can tell is by shaking it if you want to do that, just to make sure that they're perfectly sealed. But as you can see, they're all sealed. I still like to yank them and pull on them, especially if I'm going to be storing them for a very long time. If for whatever reason you notice that any of your jars uh, did not seal properly or lost their seal, don't worry about it. Just stick it in the refrigerator. Use it within a week and it's perfectly fine. Just like that we can the ground beef for long-term storage. Good for many months without refrigeration and most importantly, ready to be used on your next recipe. For more delicious recipe ideas, follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, like, share, and comment for the YouTube algorithm, and activate the notification bell so you never miss out on any of my videos. And until next time, I'm Evita, Cooks and Preps. Bon Appetit! You really have to try it.